for business. Good morning. It's Monday, April 8th, 2024, 9 a.m. The <coughs> King County Board of Supervisors would like to call the meeting to order. First item on the agenda is to review the agenda. Move to approve as presented. A motion by Scott. Second. Second by Nathan. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. <coughs> motion carries. Item number three is discussion of possible direction regarding the potential amendments to the county code of ordinance related to local meat lockers and butcher shops with planning and zoning administrator Eric Furness. Eric? Um, in your packets, you should have an email from uh, Mr. Remner, who is here today. Um, he'd inquired about our local regulations for uh, local butcher shops and meat lockers and um, maybe wanted to speak to you all about some of the requirements and limits that we have within our ordinance. I think the issue that Mr. Bremner has is our current ordinance requires um, that the property who applying for a special use permit for a local butcher shop be located along a fully paved county or state road. As you'll recall, we recently updated our ordinance probably a year ago or less um, that kind of open the door for alternative locations for local butcher shops and meat lockers. Prior to that, we did not have um, regulations that differentiated between full scale like packing <coughs> plants and local butcher shops. And so local butcher shops were required to locate in the I-2 heavy industrial area. Seeing the demand increasing over the last several years for local, um, local processing of locally raised um, meats, um, we implemented regulations that allow local butcher shops. We define them. They're much uh, smaller in scale and scope than full processing plants where people can apply for a special use permit to locate them in the A1 Ag District so long as they meet some of the other requirements that are in the ordinance, one of those being along, having access to and frontage along a fully paved county or state road. Then there's minimum separation distances must contain all waste, uh, wastewater runoff, have all the proper state and federal permits for prop processing, that type of thing. Um, so Mr. Bremner is here and I think he wants to uh, uh, talk to you about some of his concerns with our current language. Is, is all the distances and er everything that would allow him to do this, is he within the guidelines except for the gravel road issue well, there any other issues to, being to too close to be, or anything or anything to be clear there's no application having right, that's right, been right, submitted right. so we've not done any kind of review on his property Correct. he's just been doing some homework asking questions about our local regulations um, prior to submitting an application um, so I've not done not drilled down and looked at his property all gone, gone through the, the checklist because we don't have an application because okay. this would be you there would be a process similar to if they were a confined oper confinement operation or anything, you'd look at floodplain and all that sure. kind of stuff. It, yeah, the, they're, 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 we have a process in place, a special use permit process for local meat lockers and butcher shops that goes to the Board of Adjustment. We implemented it as a special use permit in the A1 district with certain minimum criteria. And, um, and, and, and so we have a pretty good definition as well as to activity levels and what would constitute a local meat locker versus a packing plant or something of that nature? Yes. yes. So. I'll let Mr. Revener speak. Do you guys understand? Yeah, if, yes, you, just, yes, if you would, <laughs> give your address, name no, and address. No and they put it in the minutes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, thanks for your time, Eric. Appreciate you. Uh, Josh Bremner. Uh, my address is uh, 1533 245th Street, Letts, Iowa. Um, so, uh, like Eric was referring, um, I'm really trying to do the preliminary work to look at putting in a, a poultry processing facility uh, on my uh, farm. That's a small farm, 30 acres. Um, live there with wife and um, in-laws. Um, and as you alluded to, the only thing that is preventing me uh, from this type of a facility is the uh, frontage road, uh, the fully paved frontage. Um, Eric and I discussed this uh, back in September, I believe. Um, and, you know, I asked all the way down to the road of, like, well, what is defined as a fully paved road? Um, really, there isn't a definition of that, and I'm not arguing that fact, really. Um, the type of facility that I'm looking at as a poultry facility um, is a seasonally-based 
operation. So it's, you know, you're raising pasture poultry out, pasture poultry, so outdoors, on pasture. Um, so Iowa, that's really only conducive for, you know, six, seven months of the year that you can do that and process. Uh, and it's then on-farm processing. And what that does is it gives you the ability to then um, sell direct to consumer via, you know, they come on farm to purchase or you go to farmer's markets or you can, you know, um, uh, not necessarily in grocery stores. Um, but there's uh, a few things that allow you to um, do a little bit more um, as far as, you know, scaling and selling and being able to actually produce something. Uh, the state of Iowa has been pushing for more um, accessibility for small-scale poultry producers uh, over the last few years. And then currently, um, the uh, Secretary of Agriculture put in um, for a, uh, I think it's uh, HS 2257, um, or a house file rather, 2257, and, and basically it's trying to create more access to people because currently, like in the state of Iowa right now, there's only one active state licensed facility that, so say I wanted to raise poultry, right? And, and we had talked about this a little bit, but there's no, there's, there is a limitation to how many birds I could raise on my 30 acres, but I could go confinement operation, I could do those types of things and raise a large number of poultry and not really be limited by any frontage road uh, conversations, right? There's, I'd have to abide by the um, um, the road necessarily being, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Embargo. Embargo. Thank you, sir. Um, and I'd have to abide by that 11,000 ton, um, 11 ton embargoed roadway. Um, but there's really no limitation in what I could produce. And so uh, the state of Iowa has been trying to push for that so that we gain more accessibility for somebody like myself or other small producers that maybe, you know, operate and raise, you know, 5,000 poultry in a summer uh, to try and sell out at local farmers markets and those types of things. Um, and so what I'm just trying to uh, potentially is look at having an amendment um, or something put into the, the current ordinance for poultry facility or for butcher meat locker facilities <coughs> that would allow for that type of a, uh, a business. And I understand the embargo roadway um, and, and I, and I suppose I understand the fully paved road scenario, um, because of, you know, rendering trucks, um, garbage trucks and that excessive, um, that increased traffic to that roadway and trying to maintain those. Um, but the type of business that this is doesn't really, that doesn't really pertain. And I understand, you know, you can't paint, you know, a, take a, a big brush and, and get everybody in that, um, within that ordinance. Um, but so I'm just asking that you gentlemen look at that um, as an allowance um, for future, you know, um, buildings, you know, poultry processing facilities. Um, like I said, uh, there's only the one plant currently that allows for this. So raising poultry really isn't an option for somebody like me currently, because there's nowhere to take your birds for processing for then resale. Um, I can go to custom plants Obviously, I could raise a thousand birds, two thousand, three thousand birds, whatever I wanted, and put all those in my my, my freezer at home. But I, I couldn't then turn around and try and create any kind of um, you know profit from that or or whatnot. So there's not a lot you can do on a 30 acre chunk of ground, and I'm and I'm that's not anybody's you know fault at all. I'm not saying that. Um, it's just what I'm trying to do to, to um, you know utilize my farm the best that I can. And this is just one way I see to do that. So are you going to process these birds yourself? You're going to have a facility to yes. process these birds yourself? That's the goal, yes, sir. So um, it would be, um, so that's kind of the, the whole point with the, the small farm processing is it's it's on farm. So it's farmer raised and farmer, produ and farmer processed, right? So I would be, along with my family, um, um, raising and then processing mm -hmm. um, weekly, biweekly, however that, you know, Depending on, you know, obviously marketability. Um, the hard part about this is scaling it up um, to, uh, there's a, the limitation is 20,000 birds annually, right? If you look at, um, if you look at, it, I can hand some of this stuff to you guys just so you have it. Um, <clears throat> if you look at um, 
how many birds are done, you know, we're talking at a, on a, at a large scale. Uh, and even at the guidelines of our, uh, of the ordinance currently for butcher facilities, that would allow me to process in the neighborhood of 1,600 birds a week uh, under the current ordinance. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't be obviously looking at doing that right away. Um, maybe, you know, long term that might be something. Um, So, so 80,000 a year? 20. Well, did you just said 1,600 a week. Well, that, that's for uh, the current ordinance, yeah. Yes, sir, sorry. The current uh, ordinance. The current, the current uh, Muscatine County. County. So, yeah. okay, correct. so it, it's uh, 30 animal head per week. And it's kind of what's listed down 0. there. 0.018 or 0. 0.18 units. Yes, sir, yep. Uh, and so that would be roughly 1,666 birds a week based on that. Um, which is obviously well above the, the 20,000 uh, producer grower under those guidelines that I handed you guys. Right. Um, so that's well above that. Um, I, previous to, to having a conversation with Mr. Furness, you know, we had talked about, uh, or I had talked with um, Iowa Department of Agriculture. Um, so that allows for, they allow for on-farm uh, composting of, you know, offal feathers and that. I briefly alluded to that in my email. Um, and then as far as I talked with DNR about wastewater application, um, and as long as I'm collecting that, which is a limitation or uh, a guideline for, from the ordinance, then you can land applicate at a certain percentage per acre uh, weekly. Or, um. So, and in looking at uh, House File 2257, has that been passed yet? That has not been passed. It hasn't been signed by the governor yet, no. So it's been passed through both houses? I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't believe it's went through the Senate. <coughs> it went through the House. So yeah, I'm trying to divine that from the, the book. And with so would your would your proposal depend on that passing? No, sir. No. Okay. No. What would it alter how that passes? Or are you just including that? I'm in including that by direction that the states take. Yes, sir. Yep. Yep. It's just a, it's it's yeah gotcha. exactly right. They're they're pushing for that ability for more small scale production, right? All right. Um, and so it's. It's important to the part to the Department of Agriculture for the state of Iowa, right? So um, that's just a point of emphasis for me. In a facility like this, inspection and, and operation would all be under the guidance of the DNR, I would assume, and Department of Ag. So you'd yes, have ag inspectors, you'd have DNR inspectors that look at your waste processing, your composting, and those practices, much like any other operation. Yes, sir. Okay. And so our, our ordinance, I don't know, uh, Eric, I, I suspect it was put in to kind of protect county roads a little bit, our infrastructure and, and that. And in an operation like this, uh, what do you, I mean, I don't, I don't run a processing facility, so I don't know, but, you know, uh, rendering trucks, feed trucks, probably. It's, I mean, it, like I said, it's such a scalable thing, right? But to 20,000 birds is your maximum for an annual that really limits the amount of stuff, uh, you know, heavy load you're going to be bringing onto your truck and then on top or onto your roadway. And then on top of that, you look at it's a pastured style uh, facility or a, a production model. And so you're operating in the summer months primarily. Um, we have an 11 ton uh, limitation on the embargoed roadway because it's chip sealed road on Cranston and it goes gravel onto 245th Street. So my property sits on Cranston, 245th. Um, you know, the most that I'm going to be operating on is, is me driving my pickup truck down the road with a trailer to go pick up, you know, a couple ton of feed um, at any given time to go down that road. And then my, with the ability to on-farm uh, compost and land applicate your wastewater, um, you're really limiting the amount you're really traveling that road. Um, and then even if you were in the embargoed uh, time frame, you, you know, I understand needing to operate within those limitations, uh, for sure. You know, I don't have a ton of, you know, farm trucks currently driving down that road in semis, although you see it somewhat. In the summertime, that road's constantly traveled with heavy load, right? Mm -hmm. um, and so that's... You, I'm of, looking at the kind of overhead shot, and it looks like you've got kind of two non-forested area portions. You've got kind of that corner in the northwest, yes, and sir. Then you've got kind of a... Uh, triangle shaped area in the there's roughly 14 14 14, 14 tillable. tillable yep where would you be thinking you'd, you'd put on that the prairie and then the, the facility so if you're looking um, 
to for the initial start for where the building uh, where I would propose the building is on, on the back side of that property on the smaller plot uh, of land there. So in the northwestern corner. There. Yes, sir. Gotcha. Off yep. of off of Cranston. Off of Cranston, which is the chip shield. So yep. that's kind of what made the most sense to me. It's closest okay. to to power. Um, you know those types of things. Gotcha, Eric. If if he put in an application, and w would it be possible? under the guidelines he's as long as he met all the other guidelines in the ordinance would it be possible that they would uh, approve a request for variance or is that a hard no because of the of the gravel road part well the board of adjustment has the authority and they have the authority to issue variances as well to any county requirements so um in, in so, theory they could approve something by giving a variance well that's why i was asking i mean uh, you know that way the ordinance is if we if they decided to move forward with it the ordinance is still in place if another situation similar to this may come up that may be more rendering trucks more heavy stuff that maybe he could put in the application and maybe they would I, the the requirement for fully paved road was put in yes primarily to protect county infrastructure because we didn't envision land application and composting all the animal biomass <coughs> Yeah, you know, I mean, we all saw, I mean, food security a big issue, and, you know, I understand the state's push to local processors because we saw over the last few years when we had significant issues, and we faced them in the county, and, you know, local processors were a key, uh, it was a nice security to have. Um, so I get a little, and I understand protecting the, the roads, but... Um, but Eric, it would be within the it would be it would be in within the board of adjustments uh, authority that if they wanted to approve something, they could even do. This is a special use permit, you said. Uh, so they they could attach conditions to the special use permit about size loads, frequency of that, if that were an issue. I mean, I I understand both sides of the coin, and I. I just think that you know if you can way have a way where somebody can make productive use of their ground and uh, do what we can to protect the infrastructure, you know, because because literally you could put a you could put a grow facility there uh, and probably have as much or more activity than what this proposal looks like to me. Um, so I, it's kind of a how do you how do you balance that? Um, and I, I understand that. That was that was kind of my whole point to this scenario is I can do this on this side of the world, right. and I, I get that you know uh, a poultry facility or a processing facility is not deemed agricultural in a lot of ways, but it but it's but it's regulated by agriculture in regard to Department of Iowa Department of Agriculture and Iowa DNR. Um, going down the road of the special use permit, um, you know the conversation that we had had in the past, uh, Mr. Furness and I. Um, you know, and I, and I don't mean this bad or negative in any which way, but, um, you know, he, he told me in an email previous that he would oppose that as an option because of the ordinance, right? If you're looking at this as black and white, which he needs to, that's his job, right? His job is to do that. Um, I understand that, but 
if I'm going to go in for a board of adjustment uh, to get a variance, then I have the county engineer and I have, you know, Mr. Furness opposing me, um, that doesn't really, you know, do much for me in that regard. That's, that's having other people have to take my word or take what my proposal is over your own county engineer and, and Mr. Furness. So um, I, I have no ill will or anything of that nature. I just think that if I go down that road, that's an easier way to say, man, we're not going to mess it's with It's a it. probability sure. question. Yeah. Do you, yeah. Are you proposing or looking simply for a change to the access to the frontage road and the paved road? Or are you looking for something more specific or more general? I mean, is it... I'm, I'm honestly looking for something that uh, potentially is a little bit more specific, right? Uh, to me, it would be more specific. It's, it's that on-farm pasture pr processing facility. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking at, you know, if you look at a footprint, and I've, I've had clients in the past. Uh, I didn't have them with me. I didn't have enough time to prepare for this um, necessarily. Uh, you know, you're looking at a 24 by 24 foot structure. Uh, that's concreted, power water, um, everything's operated within that facility, that structure. Um, you're not, you're not creating this huge, you know, infrastructure on your own property. It's, it, it's just to, you know, process what you can produce, what you can grow and raise. And it's just another way to get, to get poultry out there and, mm -hmm. uh, to utilize the property, uh, I guess my concern with, with revising any kind of a statute or ordinance and making it very specific is then that's, that's in my opinion, a, not a great way to write a law because it's, you don't want laws to be tailor-made to specific right. cases. Understand and, that. And, I, and I'm not saying you're disputing that. My, my concern then is that if we were to write it in a way that helps you, say just doing away with that requirement, for instance, or, or imposing some lesser requirement like chip seal or what have you. Um, that would, in effect, open um, up to pretty much anywhere in the county this kind of processing facility, wouldn't it, Eric? As long as it's zone A1. Right. And meets the other, like the setback and, and such requirements. So, um, you know, and I think that's something we'd really have to think through whether, um, because right now there's obviously kind of a limited framework of paved roads that this, this sort of structure right. operation would be allowed on. So I, that, I'd have to think that through a great deal, whether or not we'd want to permit these things literally to be able to uh, be established anywhere or not. And, and the, the only thing I would say to that is that there could, I, I don't see why there wouldn't or couldn't be a limitation of operating within the embargoed roadway. Um, we're talking 11 ton. Um, mm -hmm. And I understand, I, I mean, I get it. I do 100%. Um, but this type of facility, mm -hmm. and, even, and any other type of facility that had to do with processing, if you can... If I'm sitting on a graveled roadway, right, or I'm sitting on a chip sealed roadway, and there's under B, you know, or operate it within the weight limits of it, the sure. embargoed roadway, that would make sense to me. Mm -hmm. And I fully understand that. But to, to say, no, based on you're not on paved road, um, that's where I'm like, okay, well, but I'm not on paved road with this heavy, I, I get it. From the heavy load perspective, mm -hmm. and the gravel road perspective, I get that. But where I'm kind of sitting on it is, I, I never want to discourage this kind of entrepreneurship. I mean, I want people to, to be able to do these kind of things, so I, I always want to encourage that. Um, I don't really support changing the ordinance at this time, but I think it's a, a good idea to, to make that application, take it to the board of adjustments, because I, I think they can consider each of these situations when they come about, because we might run into a, you know, if we change this and then it, we run into a, a situation that might cause a lot more traffic and, and, and truck traffic that may be more damaging to the roads, then, then it might be a different issue. That's why I think the, the Board of Adjustment taking these things into consideration when there may be a smaller scale, less traffic, you know, he mentioned the embargo road and he's, and he's under those and he meets all the other guidelines I'd like to move that kind of stuff forward if we could. Yeah, I, I, I have a, there's a couple things, you know, I, you know, and I think you pointed out that it kind of troubled me. We, we, when our ordinance calls out a fully paved road, but we really don't have a definition of what that is. So what does that mean? Is that, is that a chip seal? Because I know a lot of people, you know, like we, we dealt with this back on Bayfield, right, when we had a, a, lot, a lot of construction going there and we were trying to manage that road a little bit. 
and everybody viewed that as a fully paved road, but it was really a chip seal road. And, and, and so we have some high volume, high traffic chip seal roads. And, you know, so what are we trying to protect if embargoes, you know, because I, I don't know. I mean, I would, you know, I would be in favor of t taking it back to the Board of Adjustment and having them look at the ordinance and just say, you know, let's get some clarity around those. I mean, I think you have a, a potential path with, with the 240, with Cranston. You know, we have other activities out in that area, you know, like we have that native winery that, you know, there were some concerns about neighbors and the impacts and all of that. And the operator has been really good to work with and have, have mm -hmm. you know, said this is what we'll do. And they've done that and they do it every year. And we really have had no problems and it's been a nice asset for the for the county. So um, I want to encourage that kind of stuff if, if we can. Some of our initial conversations when I gave Mr. Brender what I thought my position would be, would he make application under our current ordinance? Um, the reason that we're sitting here discussing um, the minimal impact to roads subject to embargo is because there's a hypothetical proposal to land apply all the awful the all the animal byproducts and that would be to get away from the concern of impact to gravel roads or seal coat roads and heavy traffic it necessitates that type of application which is a very slippery slope it would require special dnr on-site composting permits it's uh, by nature fairly objectionable there's a lot of environmental concerns with that when we wrote our ordinance the way we wrote it it was fully paved roads that could accommodate proper rendering and disposal services. Um, I think one of the reasons I would oppose the board or, or recommend that the Board of Adjustment not open the door to a variance here, a variance there, would be because then if you allowed this for poultry because someone was going to land apply, we've got to jump through all the environmental hoops, which are we made reasonable accommodations for local, um, local butcher shops, I felt. Then you could have someone who wants to do cattle and swine and come in and say, well, I'm only going to do five head a week because I'm going to, I'm going to land apply the byproducts from cattle and swine. You, you do have to think about when you start issuing variances to specific ordinance, the legal precedents that that does establish. How do you police that? Well, I think you write a reasonable ordinance, and Jim, step in here and, and correct me if I'm off base, but you write a reasonable ordinance that addresses your issues, allows the overall land use that you want to see what but still protects the infrastructure protects neighbors protects the environment and if you start making and you know what was your basis for putting those regulations in there if they're solid and sound there's a reason to maintain them and not start eroding some of those that that would be some of my concern um, when i came to you with the meat locker thing i mean I, I fully support your notion of hey let's increase accessibility to local local lockers I'm a big proponent of that but we do there's always an unintended consequence to land use of this type or, or many different types of land use that I think we have to consider and we have to maintain because it does necessitate other types of more intensive land use when you take away the rendering trucks and the proper disposable <coughs> byproduct then we've got to deal with a lot of environmental issues and unfortunately those types of issues have to create a problem before we come back in and do we want to get on the back side of you know contaminated waterways and attracting um, uh, nuisance animals and that type of thing what's the uh, legal standard for granting a variance is it hardship or what what is it and, and I and may, I don't know that it would really be a variance I think within a special use permit application the Board of Adjustment has some some flexibility to grant a special use permit while acknowledging that it doesn't meet you know a certain recommendation or certain <coughs> requirement a legal standard for a variance is an applicant must come to the board and 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 prove that something in our ordinance um, is unreasonable and creates a substantial hardship on them something a unique property limitation creates sure. Uh, it, it's it's not something that points to the overall unreasonableness of the zoning ordinance, but there's something unique and substantial about that property, not yeah. not our land use policies and, and, and regulations as a whole, and and so. So I guess I'm thinking that through. If I remember the board of adjustment, I'm certainly not trying to put words in my mouth or tell them what to do, but just applying that standard, I guess in my mind, 
I don't see a unique thing that creates a substantial hardship here. It certainly would prevent one particular use that's proposed, but I, I would view, I guess I would view substantial hardship as something that would basically prevent you from using your land in an economical way. And that's that's one of the, the rulings of the courts has been a, a, mm -hmm. one of the things that creates a substantial hardship is if a, if a person has been, not been denied a, a reasonable expectation of return on their property. Like our, our ordinances are so strict that you can't get any return from your sure. property. Not necessarily like, well, I want to pick this type of land use and because I can't, that, that's hard. Not necessarily the best You know, there's still agricultural, there's still residential use there. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, so. Like if I found gold under my house, variances and variances be to mine it. Right, variances have a fairly, and, and rightfully so, a fairly high yeah. legal hurdle to get over. Because um, they're not to be routinely granted. I mean, the courts have established that. So I see here in the uh, document that Mr. Bremer shared with us, the, so uh, I'm naive, custom exempt. So I see we have, a, we have a butchery operating in Muscatine County. So what's the difference between the proposal here? You know, so a custom exempt would be like a typical, you know, I could bring my poultry in, he could process it. It was in my poultry, I would take it, and that would be good. So those so are Iowa Department of Agriculture classifications <coughs> of different they types of meat processing that we do not get. We will recognize any type of licensure that Mr. Bremner or anyone else um, could acquire from Iowa Department of Agriculture. Ours is strictly land use. None of the proposed le current legislation or proposed legislation takes away any of our home rule land use regulation authority. This that That's simply dealing with types of uh, inspection and classification from Iowa Department of Agriculture. We're still fully allowed by law to regulate where these types of enterprises uh, can operate. So, what, so what, what I'm hearing is you don't recommend that it goes to the Board of Adjustment. You really couldn't uh, recommend it if it did. Is there any wiggle room in this ordinance to accommodate these different kinds of, of situations that still protect us when there's a lot more uh, concern on, on our roads and things like that. I'm not sure I understand your question. So uh, if we don't take it, if he doesn't put an application in and, and go to the board adjustment and, and under the terms that we just discussed, you don't uh, really help move that forward uh, because of what you believe it, is the right well, decision. No, I'll move any application that comes to my office forward. That's my job. If he has a legal right to submit an application. I understand, I understand that. I, I believe my job is to um, advise the Board of Adjustment and even you folks on the pros and cons of, of when they start to look at varying from or allowing something that doesn't meet right. the regulations, the implications of doing that, both pro and con. Yeah, I, I think you I understand know, and that, all. And that's all, that's what I believe. I think I understood, understood all that, and I think if it goes to the Board of Adjustments, it sounds like they're, may not be a chance for it to move forward. And my next question is, if that's the case, is there wiggle room in the ordinance for us to make an adjustment to accommodate some more, some more situations similar to this while still protecting the integrity of the ordinance if more traffic, more concerns would uh, come up in other situations? Well, I think that, it, in, my, in my opinion, that's what we're here for, is if you, for you folks to determine if there needs to be more wiggle room direct me to take the issue to P&Z and establish that, codify that wiggle room that, that we think we may need to see. I, I believe that would be the appropriate uh, avenue to take. If you believe it's too restrictive, we need to address what we believe is too restrictive in code and go from that. It's always the, the more sound way of doing things, in my opinion. Well, I remember when you brought it. When he brought it to us originally, I remember that when, and we had a pretty good lengthy discussion on the hard surface and the gravel and, and we kind of went back and forth on that and, and we decided to go with the hard surface. Uh, and I was, I was on the fence on sure. it. Um, so, so maybe that's the direction we consider is, is trying to look where we can make these kind of adjustments in the order ordinance. So maybe we're not as restrictive as we are currently. Well, in my mind, it's, and this is no pun intended, kind of a chicken and the egg question. In that, <laughs> right, the, if we ask the Board of Adjustment to review the code, and they're probably going to want to want to know what we mean by that and whether we intend for them 
to loosen it up or not. And if so, so basically they need to know what we're thinking, but we want to get their recommendation on whether to loosen it up or not. On yeah. that particular issue, sorry, Jeff, I, the Board of Adjust, the Zoning Commission, when we adopted these regulations, put forward a recommended version that didn't have that requirement. It was uh, you folks we that added actually it. Added we added it. added it. Okay. We talks more so with, with Brian, got the county attorney's input. So, I mean, I, I think, you know, it was your folk, it was your decision to put that in there. Cause your own. One of the changes, potential changes could be, you know, making a definition of fully paved road. A fully paved road to us is, you know, six inches of, minimum six inches of pavement with a, with a rock base. Well, in any event, it should be, something like that should be defined in, a, in an ordinance, I think, a regardless chip, of this. A chip seal road, depending on who you speak with, I mean, in the county engineer world, well, I remember chip seal road is a dust controlled gravel yeah, road. Yeah, I remember what Bayfield looked like after some trucks ran over that thing. So that's obviously the risk you run. Um, you, you don't know what the future holds for a facility. Um, but it could change hands, could grow, could. And I, I, but I go back to is, you know, you know, what I don't want our ordinances to do is pick winners and losers. Yeah. You know, we have, I could go, I could put in a confinement operation and run it there all day long and we have no ordinance revision. And I, I see that as kind of ironic. I, would, I don't see that. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense to me. I, I, mm -hmm. I want our ordinances to make sense. I think I would, you know, go back and ask them again and say, you know, even then if, if it is an operation like this and it's a special use permit, which I, I fully support, you know, maybe we put operating parameters around the special use permit to uh, to allay some of the fears around that. You know, I know this various boards, not necessarily necessarily this board, but boards over the years <coughs> have talked about when some of these confinement operations are put in that there have been boards that have been, you know, adamant or supportive that they would be required to be on a hard surface or a fully paved road too because of the damage and the wear and tear that they provide so <coughs> is so, that something the state limits us on our ability to restrict no i think that's a we could do that with ordinance couldn't we eric no i mean what like counts? a hog can find the water something like yeah. that it's agriculture it's exempt so we can't we couldn't regulate that if we wanted to you can't regulate agriculture you cannot right. apply building and zoning regulations uh brian would have to speak to what uh, what agriculture is allowed to do during embargo right. periods and Mr. Bremner could put however many umpteen thousand chickens that the state would allow him on that property, so long as he didn't process them on site. That's agriculture. Yeah, he, yeah. he, he yeah. could produce as many as the state law would allow. He could now. have some big Absolutely. trucks running chickens up and down Absolutely, road and, and I see the rub there, right? I mean, yeah. we tried to protect. Yeah, that's. But that's <sighs> that's where the state has left the local jurisdictions. You know, I mean, we we do have to deal with that, and I want to be clear, it, even. The Board of Adjustment, even if we addressed or loosened, um, or provided more flexibility for hard surface roads or paved roads, however you want to look at it, because this operation plan would involve land application of animal byproducts, they could look at the, <coughs> with a special use permit, you have to look, it's a case by case basis. Mm -hmm. Is this is this property ideally suited for the operation plan that, that is being proposed. So they're going to look at the topography, the wetlands, the floodplain here, mm -hmm. and say your operation plan involves, yes, you have to get a DNR permit, but they may, they very well could say, we don't think that's a good property due to land application because of slope and, and, and wetlands as well. So I just want to be clear that even if we address the road issue, you not, not every property yeah. is going to be ideal so, for, for land have, application. You have the capability to land apply enough acres for your process that you want to do. Yeah, and I can get more information for conversation, like I said, this was all initial conversations uh, to get to this point, but uh, the conversation that I had with uh, DNR was that, was of that nature, right? How much can I land applicate? And I couldn't give you the numbers off the top of my head because I don't have it in front of me, but um, that was what was going to be allowed. I could land applicate to a certain amount, which is what, that's why I said a certain amount, um, on per acre of land per, per week scenario. So obviously if it's a heavy rain, you're not going to land applicate. Right? I understand common sense doesn't come into play with ordinances, right? You can't just say we're going to make this ordinance we can't assume operate again. under common sense. I get that. Um, but with, you know, the guidelines and if you're operating within limitations of IODNR, Department of Ag, Muscatine County, right? 
then you're operating within those parameters and that's a safe, operable business. But you, you know, anybody can go out and I'm not saying farmers do this, but you know, a farmer can go out and do whatever they want to do as far as you know, not operating within those limitations. And I'm I'm not saying I'm I'm gonna do that. I'm just uh, yeah. you know so so the yeah, I'd be interested in you know understanding that too, and even the land application. That'd be, uh, I'll do some more research, but you know one of the things that, as I always thought, when you look at con confinement operations, I was always one of those people naive enough to believe believe that you'd be there was a natural a natural uh, barrier to further expansion of them because you know the land application, but you know not thinking that oh we're just gonna load it in the truck and haul it somewhere else and apply it. So, so you know, you kind of get to how much concentration of land application can you have in a given area as well. Uh, does that land application say on the actual acreage on that parcel, or can it be you know if the neighbor you know would apply, could that include the neighbor's parcel, or I, I you know I don't know. Sure, I mean there there are probably avenues for Mr. Bremner to work with neighbors if they <coughs> wanted to to allow that type of thing. But then how do you get that product there? Yeah. Right. I mean, then that's what I, we have to think kind of worst case scenario when we're looking at ordinances, like should we have a spring or even a summer where we enter into a period of rainfall for it rains and it's muddy for a month. And all of a sudden we've, we've kind of uh, relaxed some of our regulations under the presumption that we're going to be able to handle all this product right here. But now mother nature makes uh, circumstances not conducive to do that and we have a backlog and now we need to truck it out and we're dealing with a road that's not adequate for, you know, I mean, it- But that would, but that would not to interrupt you, but that would be within, that would be within the, the, the DNR, right? I still have to follow that guideline. That's my, that is my point. But if I'm operating within guidelines, mm -hmm. if I'm yeah. operating within set limitations, current set limitations, then I can't apply. That, that affects yeah. my business. And, and you'd have to truck it out. Yeah. That, well, I don't necessarily have to truck it out. That just means or okay, store well, on site, right? You're, you're going to have to store on site. You're going to have to, right? I already am going to have to store on site in order to get to my land application. How long can you store it on site? That you know, would be dependent on on you I know, mean, storage facility. Like how much? You know, do I put a thousand gallons in? Do I put in two thousand gallons? Right for storage. From but what you're going to be composting isn't going to be. Per se composting the, is going to be not the manure. It's just the process the, the, that's, of that's the birds. The, that, that's, you know, your the, they're going to be grass raised, heads, right? The, the product you can't sell. The evisceration process is going to create that little bit of, of composting material. Um, Wash water would have to be properly disposed of. Wastewater. Yeah, wastewater would have to go down. Water. You know, I'd have to look at <coughs> the potential for uh, a small septic system, more probably because you, you still have to have hand wash sink, right? You still have soap, you still, right? You still have to have those things. I have to build a structure that's going to. You know, follow rules and guidelines. I can't just be like, oh, here's this cover and I'm going to screen it with, with some screen and, and I'm going to go butcher and have a nice day, everybody, right? That's, I can't do that. So and that's not what I'm looking to do. Sorry. No, no, please finish. That, that, okay, I didn't wonder. So I'm just thinking, so if hypothetically we, we alter the ordinance in such a way that you're able to conduct your operation, um, we could still make it subject to the granting of a special use permit by the Board of Adjustment? Well, that, <coughs> right now that's right. the way that that's it is. Way it's, it would, any right meat this. locker right. requires a special use permit. <coughs> yeah, okay. Well, so, you can do what you want. You direct me well, to sure. take issue. If you want to take poultry and make it a permitted land use, yeah. you can direct me to take that notion but right to the now, board. nobody can do that without getting a special Correct. use permit. Correct, other than very small home occupation. You right, there's yourself, that exemption. When you start making it commercial, Right, even as we look at your, your documentation, yeah. right, I can, I can do uh, up to a thousand birds currently, mm -hmm. right? I could raise, process, sell directly from my farm up to a thousand birds. That's an exempt, yep. that's an exempt farm scenario. Yeah. I, um, I'd rather see the Board of Adjustment considering each one of these on a case-by-case -case basis and you know making sure that it is ideally suited. And is that the legal standard that that they apply in granting special use permits? What is their kind of test? Well, well, the legal standard is if you've implemented it as a special use, it's considered generally compatible with other land uses in a given zoning district, but it but they are allowed to look at the proposed location of a, of a specific special use. And take yeah, into so, consideration. So there is some case-by-case -case 
lens apply. So they could take into water. consideration, Certainly. you know, wastewater, whether you're on a water, you know, a creek that goes right into the cedar, whether you, all that stuff they could consider. Certainly. The way I understand it, we wouldn't even be having this conversation today if about nine months ago or whenever Eric brought that to us for the for this situation, we decided to go against the board of uh, a variance for mm -hmm. or the board of adjustment, board of adjustment I'm, excuse me um and asked them to and we and we and we added it and we did that for i think a, a fair reason because we don't want we don't want to be ruining our roads out there if somebody is bringing in a lot of these shops around the county but it, i i think i think we probably ought to consider changing the ordinance to to allow it to go to the board adjustments for each situation and i, I don't know how you write that up to make it so each situation can be considered, but well, how do you and how do you um, adjust it? In in your case, Mr. Bremner, I understand that we we think that there would be far less impact of, of trucking than there would be in a, in a, another type of case. Is that something that can be encoded in the statute? Is that something that would be directed to informally uh, for the for the board of adjustment? How would we kind of build that in for the board to? Of the adjustment to consider kind of the mitigating circumstances of the trucking is that I mean I, I start to worry you know mechanically about how that ordinance would work I don't have a good answer for I, I, great question how, how you would how would you, you know how would you would do that um, do you put language in there that says the the, the requirement it. to be on fully paved road once we mm -hmm. clarify the definition of that may be waived if the type of operation does not require equipment that would ever uh, exceed the, the, the posted capacity of the roadway. But then you're you behind the eight the ball when the issue arises. You know, that that's... Yeah, I mean, that, I just want to make sure whatever we write <laughs> is enforceable and is, you know, like I say, not, doesn't rely on the common sense of people necessarily following the law, but is clear and universally applicable. That's, that's a challenge. Do you have any thoughts on it, Jim, on, on a, a method to, of writing that ordinance that would... Well, I, I guess it's really a matter of what the board wants to do in terms of the ordinance. That's, a, that's simply an issue that would have to be decided. I guess I'm not, I'm a little bit lost as to why the application hasn't been submitted and you have this conversation if it's denied. At this point, the application hasn't been considered. Don't know if it's been denied because it hasn't been done, and we're here asking the board to change an ordinance in hopes of not having to get it denied. So it seems to me that we've put the card out ahead of the course. As it stands, I think Eric has correctly interpreted and applied the ordinance as it exists for the reasons that it was put in place. I get everybody wants to use their property. I guess they, everybody wants to make money off their property, but that's a piece of the pie. The other piece is, what's allowed in that particular zoning district and what restrictions come along with it. So Eric's absolutely correct. It's a balancing of both of those worlds. And, you know, that's not a balance that Eric's calls or I call. That's a balance at the end of the day that the board would call to say this is what we're going to do or what we're not going to do for whatever the reason. But Eric's right. Once you start it and once it's done, it's done. And it's going to go, it's going to be applied in more scenarios than we're going to be able to sit here and envision today. That's not a reason to deny it. It's a reason to simply think twice about it because that's the reality. Have we denied people for the paved road? I was thinking we had. We haven't had an application yet. Uh, I thought we had one in West Liberty. Well, that one was, it was not. Uh, that wasn't not as. Yeah. Well, that's before we actually okay. updated the ordinance to the local. <clears throat> Okay, all right, I just was new. We talked about one by West Liberty and I couldn't remember if it was a roadway or something else that, that did it. So, you know, it's a, it's a theoretical conversation, but to create a, something that's specific enough, I'm not sure is possible because there's always one more exemption and one more reason to get around it or go, go sidestep it. So I'm not, I'm not uh, suggesting for or against what I'm suggesting is at some point you have to draw a line and the line is the line. And the problem is when you're close to the line and people want to move it, that's when we start having a conversation. Uh, so I, you know, I think Eric has appropriately and adequately explained the situation and it's really up to the board. If you want to change the ordinance to whatever that is you want to change it to and live with the consequences of it, 
that's up to the board. So I guess I'm thinking that, and, and I appreciate your, your, your comments, Jim, a great deal, because I feel that problem deeply. Um, rather than sit here and speculate on what law we might write that might work, I'm far more comfortable having someone present us with a proposal. You know, this is a, a suggested amendment or a suggested change to the ordinance. And then we could evaluate that rather than you know try and uh, committee this out. I think that might be a more productive way to do it because that would allow us to consider something specific as opposed to to kind of grapple with something that only exists in our minds right now. You are spot on. Anyway, Thanks. which is why I thought we'd have this conversation. Yeah, if no, it's a good something that you wanted to direct me to take to the zoning commission. I guess given all these kind of unknowns though, I would ask for some direction. What do you want to see specifically addressed? Because that's the first question the Zoning Commission is going to ask me. Well, you know, um, I mean, I, and I don't know in what cases it's um, customary or advisable to have private counsel come up with some kind of a proposal that would suit all interest. So like if you had an attorney come up with a proposal for us, um, and I'm not trying to to, to push that on you, but I mean, it's in something as specific as this, I really need to grapple with something concrete. And I don't know that we're well equipped, either us or the Board of Adjustment, to propose something concrete when it's at the behest of a, of a particular individual who, you know, you know exactly what you want and need. And if you're able to come up with a proposal, I think that's very, very um, important that we would strenuously consider that, but I just don't know what exactly <coughs> we'd be proposing right now. Um, so I think, I, you know, I appreciate Eric, and, and like I said, he's, he's reading that as a black and white document, and I understand that's, you guys are looking at that document, and, and you made that document up, right? You guys approved that document. It went to you, you looked at it, said, well, we want to do this. Um, and like we talked about, I know that it's, it's what ifs and lots of what ifs and buts and all of those types of things. Um, and I just, I, you know, I get back to that, the hypocrisy of the, the, the farm use side of it versus the, you know, the county ordinance that, to go along with that scenario as far as, and I, I don't mean that negative, I, it's just a word. Um, but, no, it's certainly inconsistent. But it's, it's just that inconsistency yeah. of saying I can, I can operate, uh, you know, a hundred thousand bird poultry facility on my property and not have to operate within an embargoed roadway or worry about a dust control issue or any of those things. <laughs> but little old me over here, and I get that. You're not, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I'm this guy and I need this special thing. I'm not saying that, but, but there's such a divide between what the ordinance is and what is allowed within the rest of, you know, the state of Iowa. I, I just, I, that, I, that's where my struggle is, and that's where like I run in. I kind of headbutt with this, and um, you know, I, Eric, I don't want you to think that I have any ill will towards you at all, because I don't. Um, I, I understand it. Um, you know, I I moved from this to this state from Oregon, uh, you know, and that doesn't have anything to do with anything for these rules. But um, I got out of that state because of a lot of restriction, um, a lot of things that um, hinder one. Uh, you know, hinder somebody. I don't know if you guys know about their capital permit. You know, if I wanted to do a land use uh, application in Oregon, it was a capital permit. Anything that was that was that you were raising outdoors is going to be a capo. It didn't matter, right? And and there was such a limitation to what you could could and couldn't do there. Um, you know, one of the reasons we moved to Iowa because it it was more for people, right? It was more for like being able to do those types of things with your land. And and uh, you know, I'm not using that to sway one way or the other. I'm just kind of giving you a background on me in general. But um, again, I appreciate everybody's time. I, I appreciate your consideration uh, to look at the ordinance, uh, whether you change it or decide not to change it or, or what have you. Um, you know, just the opportunity to have the conversation and, and Eric invite me down to have a conversation with you guys. Um, I can always send over more information. Um, I just know that there's a push, you know, among the, the state, you know, trying to get to these small scale. Um, I feel like we're in a position, my property's in, is in an area where that would be a beneficial use. Um, and that's, that's the hindrance right now. It's just that one, that one scenario. So I have a couple questions. Yes, sir. The, 
that drainage that runs through that property, is that running water in that drainage year round? No. Only as runoff yeah, drainage? Yeah, heavy, 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 heavy rain. Okay, not a yep. spring in it anywhere or anything like no. that at all? No, it dries up completely. Okay, okay. Yeah. Get into hunting season and it's pretty much gone, so okay. walk right through it. Um, the, and I'm, I'm, I'm somewhat um, confused on, on uh, the, the water usage uh, and, and you're going to, you're going to compost your, your water usage when you dress these birds. Is that what I'm understanding? So you would land applicate the water usage. Land applicate the water. Yes, sir. And, and then like your offal, as far as your, your innards, right. From, right. Through the evisceration process, uh, feathers that is allowed through, uh, Iowa department of agriculture to be composted. And there's, there's a very, like, if you look at the, the guidelines you have to do six inches of you know uh roughage basically chip wood chips and those types of things sure. per your right so you have to follow those guidelines and that's sure. kind of my point sure what 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 volume of of water do you do you think that this would generate um i know i heard you talk about a 1000 gallon tank or a 2000 gallon tank um it takes a tremendous amount of water to butcher with it, it, it takes a tremendous amount. So, I mean, I don't know, I don't know how often you'd be able to apply this, but uh, and I don't know a number. But so if you're, I, I would if have you're to get butchering you, every yeah. day. If you're butchering every day in a in a segment of time, that's going to generate it. And, and like I say, I don't know the number, but I can tell you it's a lot. So I'm just curious on the on the volume of water storage one might have, and the system one might have to be able to hold and pump and disperse. That was a thought that I had. Um, to your point, who regulates that too? The, the the storage of that water is that DNR or is that DNR? Okay. Yeah, depending on how Okay. I'm trying. I'm trying to recognize as well <clears throat> the uh, in 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 your business. <clears throat> what's typical butcher weight of these meat producing chickens that you're growing? At, at after like carcass weight. Uh, I want to know that number. Okay, also. so you're going to average anywhere depending on a hen or uh, a rooster, if you will. Uh, you're going to be between four and a half to seven pounds, and that's that's typically you're raising a bird. Uh, in, in my experience, um, raising Cornish cross, um, I've raised it about seven and a half weeks to butcher. So from chick to butcher is about seven and a half, seven and a half weeks of growth. So like I said, you know, we're talking, if you're butchering every day, you're not butchering every day, you have to operate with, within that, that guideline of 20,000 birds, you know, annually. So I guess if I'm gonna, you know, that would be based on my, my limitations imposed on myself by whatever I did for my storage tank facility, right? So if I put a thousand gallon or a 1500 gallon container in, um, you know, and I process 400 birds in that day. Sure. Right. <clears throat> I've moved on from the water. <clears throat> uh, uh, my question is on uh, this live weight bird <clears throat> is gonna be seven and a half pounds. I was telling him, is that dressed weight? That would be dressed weight. So, <clears throat> so live weight would be what? So I couldn't give you a 100% <clears throat> number on that because I don't think I've ever weighed a live chicken. Um, I just know dressed weight but, after the fact. Yeah, so. I mean. Yeah, so um, add a couple pounds because their conversion to meat is. I, I would think they'd dress three-fifths. Their, their conversion's pretty high. I mean, that's kind of like <clears throat> one of the benefits to raising poultry, right? No, I get right? it. Yeah. I get it. I'm trying to figure out the tonnage that you're going to have um, to compost is what I'm trying to figure out. And. How much, how much square footage it's going to take to compost that amount of tonnage and the length of time it's going to take for that <clears throat> product to, to, compost. to compost through. Right. Have you got any answers for me there? I don't have an answer for you there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> just based on, uh, you know, experiences of, um, of composting on other farms. Um, you know, I'm not, I can't even, no, I get it. I can't I get even it. scale you on that. I get it. Um, and what was the distance of the chip seal? I missed that. I didn't. One point two miles was it? 
roughly 1.2 miles down to my road, down to where that, that back of that property is, okay. our property is. And currently, currently on that chip seal and that, they run um, typical agricultural traffic, am I right? Oh, yes, sir. Grain trucks and yes. all that machinery? Yes. Right all summer long. Probably all day long. And what, uh, okay. I mean, we just harvest, they just harvested all of the, what is the, I, I don't know the product, the big tall grass that they cut for. Macanthus, right. So there's a large field uh, out at my property that the, um, the coders own. Um, and, you know, they process that every year. So that's, sure. that's nothing but big old heavy trucks sitting on it the whole time yeah. they're doing that. <clears throat> yeah. Um, I'm, I'm never going to get to that weight. <laughs> no. And that's another thing that, that my final question is, uh, uh, the heavy loads that your business would, would promote, um, other than you're looking at uh, uh, trash and rendering trucks, I, I would assume um, anything past that, you're not going to be hauling heavy tonnage of, of feed. No, yeah. and even I mean, on the you, you know, know you the rendering hauling. truck and the I mean that's going to be such a limited. Right, right. So your your feed your feed weights and and that the only thing that I can see is is what is your best guess at marketing this product Where, where's where's your customers your customer going to be at these farmers markets is your customer going to be uh, plant pickup um, where, where do you feel your where do you feel your customer base is going to come from just break it down for yeah, me. yeah I would say depending on you know the operation of that uh, list that I gave you uh, operating under the 20,000 bird right yeah right um, you have marketability to go to say, you know, uh, Merritt Farms down there is an example. That's like a farm store outside, yeah. right? So I could sell at that kind of a store. Um, I'm trying to figure out yep. the, the, the yep. amount of what's the different traffic. That's right. what I'm trying to figure out here. Yep. Uh, so I would probably call it a 50-50, right? You're going to have, you know, farm pickup on, on processing days. Mm -hmm. um, and then you're going to have um, going down to, you know, Muscatine County Farmers Market, or uh, or the Muscatine Farmers Market here, or Davenport mm -hmm. Farmers Market. Mm -hmm. you, you, accessibility wise, you're going to go to farmers markets primarily, just based on the fact that, you know, I'm little old me out in Let's Iowa, mm -hmm. you know, out off of Cranston. <coughs> it's not not getting you know, potential, right? Potential right. for people to come to your farm, absolutely. Yeah. Um, but again, then you're operating within those outside of that you know, embargo roadway as far as, or within those limitations, because that's summertime, that's, you know, you do have increased traffic, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't consider your increased traffic to be higher than um, the farming traffic that currently exists on my road, is, I guess is my point, I'm, uh, or the, the point that I would make to that. Um, right, right, the, 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 the ag traffic wouldn't pick up, it's the, <laughs> it's the consumer traffic, you know, you, you, uh, you think of the amount of people that now there, there's going to be a percentage of people that will really enjoy coming to an operation like this and to be able to select the birds they mm -hmm. want to select and and look at the flock that that is that is visible That's being going to be processed right. yeah they're, yeah they're, i mean uh, it, it has the same type of uh of uh intrigue as as people that uh, go to apple orchards and things of that nature it's just for the experience of i mean there's a tremendous amount of people it's never raised chickens haven't been around right. chickens they don't have any idea you know and that and that should be considered right obviously i mean that's yeah. there is appeal for people to want to come out and drive by it right and look at mm -hmm. it. right um, for sure um, yeah. and when you have that chicken round up that day with all them kindergarten kids that'll be a hoot oh <laughs> i don't know i don't know that you probably you just process chickens or not but it's not always that kid friendly so oh, we need to really <laughs> never would have guessed that <laughs> We kind of need to figure out a direction forward. I think the two options is if we if we do have the cart in front of the horse here, he he we have him ask him to put the application in to the board of adjustments, and then we reevaluate after that, or we consider changing the ordinance. Um, I'm personally okay with either one because I think we're the ones that restricted the ordinance to got us here today. But I'm okay with either method that we recommend to him. Yeah, I think there's enough. Uh, uniqueness in the application that would come in that I that I'm reasonably confident the Board of Adjustment would, would probably come to us and uh, recommend approval uh, you know with the on-site composting and all that I, I don't uh, but again you know I'm uh, 
it might be better to, to let the process run. I've always said I'm a process guy. I like to let the process go, let, let the Board of Adjustment uh, talk about it, uh, you know, put an application in, and if it comes to us, as a denial, then we can. Then we'll have a, yeah, then we, we can. We could say can discuss well, it some more, maybe. Yeah, I think that stuff. puts us in a better kind of positional posture to deal with it because then we're following, you know, uh, the way I think it's supposed to go. Yeah, right. yeah it, rather than changing the law because something might get denied, um, you, know, you want to take the least uh, drastic step first. The other, <coughs> however, I do think that there are at least two things that we should address in changing the law. That is number one, we should provide a very clear definition of fully paved road. And number two, um, <clears throat> we should define very clearly, if it's not elsewhere defined, occupied structure. Because I know there's a setback requirement from occupied structures. And I don't know off the top of my head whether that means a house, whether that means a, a, like a shed someone's always working in, if that means like a, a barn you go into twice a year but you use it on your farm, you know, I think just to be clear, we need to very clearly define that. And I don't, I don't have any suggestions for how to define it. I just think it needs to be defined. Well, the right. DNR. Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the DNR. Is a I think there is a definition with the DNR right. on occupied structure. Right. And, and uh, so maybe we just incorporate that by reference. I don't know, but it should be defined rather than left to interpretation. Yep. Also, yeah. and and the, the it's a little confusing to me. The separation distances of less than 750 shall be denied. Does that mean that we are giving, we're granting discretion to go between 750 and 1250 if it's so decided? Or does that mean that uh, uh, separation distances of 750, even where the structure is owned by the facility operator, shall be denied? Preferred that they maintain 1250, but it leaves the door open for the board adjustment to approve it if it's at least 750. So, preferably 1250, absolute minimum 750. Got it. But it, but if it were the not the, counting the owner operator, not counting the owner operator, because cer yeah. certainly we have okay, okay, so yeah, okay, that makes sense because uh, hopefully the owner operator will be able to deal with it. Yeah. That those would be my suggestions, but go through the process and and then elucidate definitions of paved road and and occupied structures. And I appreciate you bringing this issue to us. Uh, and having this You're discussion, right is, way, yeah. these are always beneficial, make us think about stuff and unattended consequences of our actions as well. Um, I think okay. Nathan, from an occupied structure standpoint, uh, it's generally focused on, I guess, two things in my mind, at least criminally. Mm -hmm. One, a person stays there, or two, a business is operated from there and things of value are stored therein. So, so like, would like curtilage building yeah, be? I mean, structure okay. you, know, you don't spend the night you <clears throat> store things there of value or you operate a business out of it got it it's an occupied structure for purposes of the criminal okay. statute i wouldn't imagine the civil statutes are very far yeah. from that. as long as that's clear um, yeah, it's somewhere i'm glad i'm fine with that though. it's literally anything that is not abandoned right oh and you don't have to you don't have to be in it every day mm -hmm. you can store a piece of machinery in it or anything <clears> and uh, uh of that nature and it's considered occupied and that comes from DNR regulation. Mm. Got it. Okay. But I would like to see the definition of paved, you know, at some point. So is that direction you got? Do we are, are we agreed on that? Are you, you good with the direction? Yeah. 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 I think. Uh, Eric, are we, well, you clear? Are we? Are we adding definition? Yeah, a little more concerned that Eric. Are we asking him to? to to talk to the uh, board of adjustment to recommend that we clarify those, you know, those definitions. Whether well, that's them or we I don't certainly do that. I just, I would, it sounds like that you're wanting the process to play out yep. and then yep. maybe take further look at it depending on the results of that petition. Mm -hmm. petition. Yep. I would fully expect, and this is just based on my reading of the ordinance, that it will come back tonight because if you look at the ordinance, it says if all of the following conditions sure. are met. Um, but I certainly see you wanting to have the process play out first, but I would mm -hmm. expect it to be back in front of you right. because the board is going to look at that <coughs> and say, are all these conditions met for yeah. us? To, it makes those a stipulation. Sure. Um, and and, and they're, they're going to recognize that, that you folks put the road requirement into the ordinance. So I just want to make that 
clear. Yeah. They, they yeah. could surprise me, but I, I just... Well, and then that, I think, yeah, opens... Really take a look at it and that opens the way, I think, for you, Mr. Bremner, to prepare something very specific, uh, if it should come to that point, uh, a specific recommended change to the ordinance that we could look at uh, and, I think, evaluate in a more concrete fashion, which I think is always a better way to make a law. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Sweet. I'll, I'll submit for my denial and then <laughs> come back for a conversation for sure. Um, uh, like I said, I appreciate uh, your time. I appreciate Eric, uh, you know, invite me down to have with you, you know, gentlemen for the conversation and the meeting. Um, and if, you know, something can come of it, that will be outstanding. If it doesn't, then, you know, the world keeps spinning and move on. Okay. So, Thank you. Thanks. Thank you for your time today. Yes, sir. Okay, next on the agenda, item number four, discussion of possible action to accept the following reports. The county <laughs> reporter's report of fees collected for the quarter ending March 31st, 24, uh, in the amount of $52,542.82. The motion by Scott, second by Kurt. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. <coughs> aye. aye. Opposed the same. Motion carries. Item B, Muskingum County Sheriff's Office, Civil Department's report of fees collected for the quarter ending March 31st, 2024, in the amount of $27,032.18. Move to approve. I have motion by Scott. Second. Second by Nathan. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same. Motion carries. Item C is County Treasurer's report of fees collected for the quarter ending March 31st, 2024, in the amount of seven hundred and six thousand eight hundred and twenty-five dollars and thirty-one cents. Move to approve. I have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Danny. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries. Mm -hmm. Item five is discussion and possible action to approve the minutes of the April first, twenty twenty-four regular meeting. Move to approve. I have a motion by Kurt. Second. Second by Danny. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed the same? Motion carries. Item six, correspondence. Scott, did you have anything? I had nothing to note. Nathan? Uh, no, nothing to note. All I had was, I've had a couple of correspondences around the port initiatives, uh, and then I just had Danny and I, I think were included in from Mr. Bremer yeah. with Eric. Okay. I had the same as Jeff, that, that email exchange with Mr. Bremer and uh, and the conversation we had on the board, or the information you shared anyway. Okay, Kurt, no, nothing? Do you have any committee reports, Kurt? No, I did. Okay. I 4-3 Housing Council. I had no committee reports. Nathan? Housing Council on the third. And Scott? I had none. Okay. Item eight, items with the administration office. Discussion on possible action to approve a hiring request for community services. This is just filling a, a vacant position. We had um, someone leave. We had someone from the department move <coughs> into that spot. So this is back filling the spot that the person moved out of. Okay. I'll move to approve. I have a motion by Danny. Second. Second by Nathan. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, the same. Motion carries. Item B is discussion of possible action to approve resolution 0408-2401, transferring funds from the Rural Services Fund to the Secondary Roads Fund. I move to approve. I have a motion by Scott. Second. Second by Kurt. This is a roll call vote. Scott? Aye. Nathan? Aye. I vote aye. Danny? Aye. And Kurt? Aye. Motion carries. Anything else, Nancy? No, I don't have anything else. Any county employees that wish to address the board on an item? Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to give a, uh, a project, <coughs> excuse me, a project update. Uh, our North Isa Ave bridge, uh, which IBC is doing, um, they've finished driving the piling. Um, so then this week they'll be forming up the abutments. Um, I know last week they got slowed, slowed by the rain a little bit, um, but it's still moving along pretty well. Um, then our 2024 pavement markings, which is Vogel Traffic Services, we've heard for, we heard from them last week. Um, they plan to be in late April or early May. Um, then we have 
our HMA crack filling. That's just a maintenance project. Um, we usually do it annually, uh, which is through Denko um, this year. Um, they're hoping to be in sometime uh, later this week. So you'll probably see them out on our asphalt roads um, doing some crack sealing. So then also I wanted to – I've been asked by a couple uh, uh, board members and then just other people in the public. Um, just wanted to give a reminder of our public hearing for the – proposed vacation of Edgewater and 245th, or portions of 245th. Um, it is next week at the Environmental Learning Center at Discovery Park at 6 p.m. on Wednesday, the April 17th. So, in, re in regard to that, I don't know who's best to answer the question. How will that process work that evening? Is, it, is, is there going to be a, a debate on that? I'm assuming they're going to come and give us a number. It, are we sitting there in silence and just taking the conversations they have? Are we having a discussion on that? What would what should we expect <coughs> for that evening? Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. <laughs> um, well, I think given the number of people that are in the affected pool, I think it's going to be uh, pretty much uh, impossible to to do much more than to accept the information in terms of damages that are claimed. That information will then need to be reviewed in the light of the information the county has obtained, uh, and then we would have to make a determination about whether or not you would proceed forward with the vacation, and if you did, what damages you were willing to pay uh, in, in accordance with that or not. And uh, then, of course, whatever those damages are determined by the board, the po parties have opportunity to appeal. And if they appeal and that damage award is exceeded, then the county is responsible for attorney's fees and so um, you know that it's a it's not a I guess a normal process where you've just got a few people to consider uh, you know this is a this is a, a pretty good number of people uh, as to what they're going to submit I don't know uh, that's all guesswork at this point I did talk to council last week for uh, the homeowners association and I think they are prepared to proceed on the 17th that was one of my questions are you ready to proceed do you have a, have you had enough time uh, that sort of a thing, and and of course uh, they wanted me to share the numbers that we had obtained, which of course I uh, declined to do. So, uh, you know, what they're going to do is, you know, again I've encouraged uh, things that they may be able to do as private homeowners to get the situation rectified and keep their cabins, but whether they're going to come and ask for full compensation as if the property is completely a fair market value of the property, if they're going to ask for something partial. I don't know the answer to those questions, and so not knowing what they're going to present, it's very difficult to respond. So, so after we get there, whatever they offer us next week, we'll just take that those numbers. Well, I think practically then, speaking, we're going to have to do that to consider them in terms of the claim. Again, not knowing what's going to be submitted and the detail that's submitted, then uh, look at our information and determine what the county believes is a fair damage award if vacation is going to could proceed forward and I mean I think that's going to take some time I don't see that happening next Wednesday night in Totel um, so, so after they give them to us I mean within the next week or two after that can we expect to probably go into a closed session with our numbers and what they offered us and kind of resolve this in somewhat of a timely manner you believe well I'm not interested in delaying it I think any more than anybody else is no. but to, to sit here today and put a time limit on it uh, I'm not willing to do and wouldn't recommend the board do I think we have to consider it in due course and make sure that whatever decision is made, we have the best information possible to make the best decision possible. And I, I presume we'll have that, but I'm not going to tell you that something else. Kind of hard telling what we're going to get from them. Yeah, we don't know what we don't know. Yeah, I understand don't know that. that. And I've asked, you know, if anything else within the committee, I asked several times, is there anything else we want to consider? Because I, I, know, I know how it can work, and that is things come up after the fact. And then it's you don't have that information, and it impacts it, and then you have to make those decisions. So, um, yeah, I I, uh, I, I I'm not going to stand here and uh, speculate as to what they're going to submit, but um, but our deliberations would be in a closed session. Well, we would have the ability to uh, certainly look at the, the damage numbers, make a determination what we think is an appropriate damage. Uh, for the county, if the county proceeds with vacation, present that information to them, and then they have their their options uh, and under the statute to move forward. So, I'm not, you know, um, um, 
I'm not going to stand here and say at the end of the day a decision relative to the damages would be made in a closed session. I think it would be we need to consider what they've given us in light of what we have and then have that conversation. And that conversation may include having the person that we hired uh, answer questions of the board and, and make those determinations on damages. Yeah, and I, I would venture a guess that you know when they present something to us, we'll probably need to cl clarification of some of the ask or try to some brief questioning there so we all understand exactly what it is that they desire, what they believe that to be. Yeah, and I think you'll get a hodgepodge of damages. People, some people are motivated enough to get an appraisal. Some people are probably take fair assessed value. Some people will want a total, a total uh, damage for their property of fair market value, and some people might be willing to keep it and do something different. But, but again, I think ideally in both worlds, the taxpayer world and the folks that live out there world, some type of, uh, of acquisition of the road with some type of. Uh, drainage structure at that particular location might work best for everybody, but I can't make people do that. So so part of the process is I, I believe anybody that was that felt they had a claim for damages was to notify us in writing prior. Now that'll so be that's there, that's now at this. or at that point. So how will we so this will be, you know, we don't know even who may have a claim, right? We want we won't know who will submit a claim. Okay. We know the people that we mailed notice to uh, that group of people is identified. I'm not sure what that number is, but it's got to be 20. It's adjacent landowners oh. and utilities. Am I? In the I'm IOD sorry. OT. Adjacent oh. landowners, utilities, and Iowa DOT. Because yeah. yeah, I, I was, I kind of, I've read that Iowa code. And I'm not sure I'm interpreting it correct because it talks about being landlocked. And if they're landlocked, even people that own land would be eligible for a claim. Is that, that accurate? It's a double negative. I think you have to <laughs> you have to be landlocked. Uh, basically, you're going to have to be landlocked and or have a homestead on it is the way that it's being interpreted. The way I would interpret it. Yeah, that's the way I kind of understood. So, um, um, you know. So, so, just real quick, I know we need to wrap up, but if if we don't come to an agreement between the both parties, the the options going forward is we stop the vacating process, or it could possibly go to court. Them are the two options at that time, right? Well, I think I think there's there's uh, several options. One would be that the parties somehow negotiate a resolution of the closure that's acceptable to both. That's that's a discussion I think that is worth value to the county in having. Uh, the second alternative is people submit their damages. You pay those damages if you're going to close the road, or you don't, and you replace the bridge. Uh, the third alternative is you take their damages, our damages, and we figure out what we think the actual damage is based upon uh, the, all of the factors in the case that would be considered. I mean, the road's not available all year anyway. You know, if you're not going to take the structure, do you want to pay for the structure? Again, it, it's a, there's a lot of variables that are going to potentially play into it that would impact damages. But at the end of the day, if people were dissatisfied with whatever the county's determination was, they have a right to redress that with the court. And the court, you know, has a statutory obligation to look at it. Again, here are the evidences to damages, whether or not what we've done is reasonable or what we've suggested is reasonable, and move forward. So, I mean, there's a, I think you could end up in any one of those potential categories. So. Thank you, Jim. Yep. Thank you. Next, is anybody else from the county employees? Next is to receive comments from the public. Anyone from the public wishes to address the board on an issue not on the agenda? Okay, seeing no one come forward, it is 1024, meeting is adjourned.